This is David Bullock, davidbullock.com. I'm interviewing Russell Wright from ThemeZoom today, and we're going to be asking him the tough questions, and hopefully we get some good answers. Okay. Russell, give me the corporate story on ThemeZoom. Where did it come from, really? Well, actually, ThemeZoom was developed out of a lot of pain uh, in the area of keyword research and SEO. Uh, what happened is that I was doing keyword research for a very large corporation, mm -hmm. and I was trying to take a lot of different bits of data put it together uh, to make the best choices for my clients based on which keywords to use. And what was happening is I was getting a lot of difficult and uh, unrelated data from a lot of different tools in the marketplace. And I was trying to create a coherent picture or model of what was happening in the market. And uh, I couldn't do it by hand because mm -hmm. I really wanted the big picture. And I was really confused about the difference between keyword research mm -hmm. and market research. Mm -hmm. I, was thinking, I used to think that they were the same thing. They're not. Mm -hmm. they, and I know you. <laughs> really know that that's the case. But the story is really interesting. So mm -hmm. what I did is I, w I got uh, uh, an interview with Sue, and actually it was, uh, I was talking to Sue Bell, and this is when I r early on in our relationship. Mm -hmm. And I knew that she was a, a good programmer, but I didn't know that she was a military industrial mm. programmer with Uber. You know, some heavy duty stuff that she had done. And so you know, when she was talking to me about you know, all the other keyword tools that are out there, uh, how they needed to be integrated mm -hmm. and how you needed to think bigger, not just about your keywords, but about how it integrates with the web. Mm -hmm. uh, how you can, I mean, her mind just immediately went into this huge place of how to put it all together in some kind of Uber program. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I thought this was an impossible thing. As it turns out, um, a lot of other people had viewed that kind of level of integration as very impossible as well. Mm -hmm. So they hadn't even attempted to create a, a whole uh, system to integrate the whole life cycle of the keyword. That, that is the whole educational buying cycle throughout the whole uh, buying cycle of, of, of a, a customer. A transaction. Yeah, right. a transaction. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking in terms of, you know, just tell me what, what are the best keywords to use on my website. And she was thinking in terms of how do you track, monitor, and engage the entire conversation from beginning to end and then build and dig into that conversation to get more value out of it and keep building your empire based on that. Well, if we take that a little bit further and you look at the website as an environment, you actually drop the keyword or the visitor who is in a conversation into an environment. And now you have them there. The key is to get them in the proper conversation first, then take them into the environment that will cause them to transact, exactly. and then they transact and then you move them forward. Now, whether they're looking for new information or they're looking to actually purchase, those are two separate ends of the spectrum. Yes. And, I, and from my experience with ThemeZoom, you're actually looking for what they call the money keyword. Yes. Now, talk to me about the money keyword. What is that all about? <laughs> Show me the money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, basically what happened is, for us, we have nine species of keywords, the most important one being the money keyword. The money keyword is any keyword dash idea that has directly led to a trackable or measurable, mm -hmm. as you would say, sale. And once you have a measurable sale, um, you're kind of into, you can extrapolate data from the market based on that keyword much more accurately than when you're just guessing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people out there are building websites based on estimated data, guesswork, uh, keywords that they think might work from various data sources. Mm -hmm. But the reality is you can integrate all of the different keywords at the various phases in what I call the life cycle of the keyword mm -hmm. to determine where uh, that word or idea is within the buying cycle. So the money keyword is if it's converted, that is, you can track, it's measurable, you can tell that it's been, uh, it's been, it's given direct results mm -hmm. that ended up in a transaction or Got a sale. It. Got it. Yeah. Now, I, I know that the ThemeZoom tool takes into account more than just traffic. A lot of the keyword tools that are out there talk about just traffic. Right. How many people search for this term? Um, I know that the ThemeZoom tool does more because it looks at actually the market potential, yeah. the cost, traffic number of clicks, number of searches. Talk to me about that. What makes the theme zoom, zoom tool different as far as integrating all the real data required to actually make a real valid decision? Well, and that's important. We take into account data uh, from pay-per-click search engines, mm -hmm. and so we have a good idea of the value of a keyword overall. Mm -hmm. Because in the pay-per-click environment, you know if, if someone's paid a certain amount of money, it's either converted or not, or it's had clicks or not. Mm -hmm. That's one stream of data which you should consider. But then there's also the natural search engines. And the natural search engines are a different kind of environment. In fact, uh, I've talked before uh, with associates like Jerry West and mm -hmm. the rest where we believe that it's in, in some ways, in some markets, a completely different market segment. Mm -hmm. The people using pay-per-click versus 
natural search engines. So we also take into account the number of queries on Google mm -hmm. on a monthly and yearly basis mm -hmm. for the natural keywords. The idea is to bring all of those together in a perpetual cycle of integration so that you can make choices, uh, much better choices than anyone who's not considering both paid dollar mm -hmm. amounts and natural organic listings. We take those together and we have a proprietary technology that takes into account something called co-occurrence. Mm -hmm. Co-occurrence allows you to uh, take a look at the natural engines around major markets mm -hmm. and not just focus on a single keyword and its rankings, which is great, but it's not the whole story, right. but focus on swallowing the entire market whole based on a global view, a top-down view of all the keywords and the associative co-occurrences. And co-occurrences are how a major idea relates to all of the baby ideas mm -hmm. or the children ideas within that idea. And when you can see which children are the most important related to the top idea, and you can go to your client with how much money is in that market, how much traffic is in that market, how many general queries are in that market, uh, your competitor has no hope of keeping up with you. <laughs> <laughs> they really don't, because mm -hmm. you're looking at a global view rather than just a piecemeal view of a market. So we provide that market thumbprint or that market map of global vertical online research. Does that make sense? Now that, that makes good sense. Too much? No, it's not too much. The thing that, I, that comes to mind now is that sounds like man years. Mm -hmm worth of data. You're not, just, you're, not just, you're not just looking for searches, you're not just looking for traffic, you're not just looking for a pay-per-click. Right. You're looking at it all together and then you're making correlations between right. one channel of data versus another versus yeah. another versus another. This sounds like a, a massive amount of data that then needs to be massaged so it becomes meaningful. Right. It's not just data, it becomes information that you can then act upon. Right. So is it, if, if I'm hearing this right, this is a very significant endeavor and, and quite an accomplishment technical accomplishment because I'm not seeing this anywhere else. Yep. This oh. is not a typical keyword research oh. tool. No, no, you can't find this kind of uh, technology anywhere in the world. And, the, and when you get close to it, you're dealing with major archival systems for like the Library of Congress and all these other kinds of things. Um, but not only that, those systems aren't um, wired for marketing. They're not wired to give you a value of the market, to help you put a dollar amount on the words, whereas our system is. And this is not, it used to take, like when Sue and I were compiling a site uh, based on this kind of data by hand, it could take you up to a week or two just mm -hmm. to get to the basic keyword structure of the whole relationship. Mm -hmm. um, cracking some of the drill downs right now and cracking for major markets uh, in about an hour, we can cover you know, thousands of keywords within a market and tell you exactly what place they belong, where they, what their place is in the hierarchy of your site, as well as in the hierarchy of your um, vertical. So done the right way, if someone were to partake of your tool, you can get a, a, a market map. You can see the market, how it's moving, where it's been, and how it can possibly evolve? That's correct. If you know what you're doing, you can look at, in fact, you could extract every last drop, <laughs> every keyword with an entire vertical that has any dollar bill tied to it and the ones that do not. The, the keywords that do not have money tied to them that are not useful in a pay-per-click environment uh, are called educational keywords, mm -hmm. and we, we still provide the queries on Google for those, and you take an extrapolation, and you can see what's happening in the market. So you can prioritize a list, of words uh, that are high dollar mm -hmm. and take a look at all the data and the ones that are maybe less on your priority list you can put towards the back to add page or content later on. In fact, we originally designed uh, ThemeZoom 3.0 to be a content selection prioritization system. Mm -hmm. So when we integrated that into this, that's all very easily uh, approachable now in the mm -hmm. system. So you can very uh, met methodically mm -hmm. <laughs> um, own your market over time. You don't have to take heaven by storm. You can gradually create a schedule over a month or a year to um, drip um, keywords and specific uh, associated relationships in articles in their appropriate frame. Or you can take heaven by storm if you have the budget and own an entire vertical very clearly. So it sounds like done the right way, this is the ultimate marketing intelligence tool, yeah. business intelligence tool, as well as just being able to really see what's happening in your market from a profitability standpoint and not just a traffic standpoint. Is that a, a true statement? Yeah, very much so. In fact, we're moving away from having a myopic view mm -hmm. of the web at, from an internet marketing perspective mm -hmm. or even from an SEO perspective. We have to, as we move more and more to multi-channel marketing mm -hmm. and as the digitization of physical space, that is that offline products and services begin to be tracked on the web mm -hmm. and all kinds of things like that, people need to be aware of their whole vertical markets and think much bigger than just you know, owning a little piece or w whether they're ranking for a page or not. Rankings will become secondary um, to sales and conversion and business models over the next two to three years in the semantic web.
Sounds good. Well, thank you for that overview on ThemeZoom and what it does and how it works, and we'll talk again soon. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Russell. Thanks, David.